three, two, one. We are live. Hi, guys, and welcome to another Behind the Lines podcast. Well, it's technically not another. It's the original, but this is the second one I've recorded. It's not uploaded the first one yet. And I want to talk to you about today with my honored guest, uh, Fearless Indian. Now, Fearless has been a pillar in my Heroes and Generals community. He helps out new players where he can. Um, he's even pointed out to me when people on the opposite team are stream sniping me and various other things. Thank you for that, by the way, Fearless. Um, so before I, I get into the topics at hand, which is going to be a quality of life for what you see here, good old Heroes and Generals, I want to talk to, to get Fearless. I want, I want Fearless to introduce himself. So go ahead, buddy. Well, as Cobra said, I am Fearless Indian. I am, as of my voice sounds, I am young. <laughs> and so I like playing Heroes and Generals, obviously, and I like playing just pretty much any uh, PC game. So yeah, that's me. And put it like this, this man used to be the pain in my ass when I was trying to grind out my German tanker. Every time my tank was destroyed by an AD Rambo, Fearless was near me. <laughs> Just to keep you in mind, you can never be safe for you. <laughs> exactly! And see, so, that's the thing. I, I, want, I want everyone to know that if I'm playing a game and you kill me, it's nothing personal. I don't immediately scream stream sniper or anything like that. I just don't. You know, it happens. It's a, it's a, it's a PvP video game. You're going to meet other people, you know, who know me, who don't know me, who watch my streams, who don't watch my streams. That's uh, uh, twitch.tv slash deceptive cobras, by the way. And um, so what as you can see on the screen now you're looking at my german recon Matthias Hetzer. um i love recon recon is my favorite class in heroes in generals and sadly the recon class needs in fact all the classes need facelifts they need refreshing they need a, a with, with the implement of squad 2.0 i'm sorry but the game needs to be um the units themselves need to, 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 to show that. And one of the things I would like to do is do class specific badges only. For example, how many times have you been killed by a wannabe infantryman who wants to be a recon with the freaking recon perk badge? So he's got no kill cam and he's got a bolt action, you know, car 98, you know, M1903, you know, moist nugget or Mosin again, as you regular normies call it. Uh, and you think to yourself, it's like, come on, dude, just drop the money and be a recon, you know. And sadly, you, you, some of you new guys who are watching, the, you know, the podcast for the first time or listening to the podcast for the first time, if you're watching the video, the, the vlog, you'll notice that under my career options, my recon has the ability to go back to an infantryman. And there are a lot of people out there that have started playing the game and realized that their 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 soldier is locked to a specific career path. They cannot go back to an infantryman. Mine can. Um, for example, my infantryman, uh, uh, Jan Schmidt, he, he can go to any other class he wants. Recon, tank room, and paratrooper, fighter pilot. Why? Because he's grandfathered. Uh, my account is so old that the majority of my units are grandfathered. My tanker can go back to infantryman. My paratrooper can go back to infantryman. I believe even my fighter pilot can go back to infantryman. Oh, no, 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 my fighter pilot can't. Sorry, I bought him just after the update. So my fighter pilot cannot. However, every other unit in my German faction can chop and change as many times as they want. Um, now, what I would like to do is I would like to say my piece on why recon is the most heavily underused, overworked, and pardon my French, overfucked unit in Heroes and Generals. Now, by the way, this podcast is 18 plus, so there will be F bombs. <laughs> um, plain and simple. Do you see right here the, the Denning Glass 630 binoculars? They do nothing in the game, except for give me a, la a, a, a somewhat zoomed in point of view. They don't give me peripheral vision. They don't give me, you know, aimbot, ESP. They, they don't give me anything other than the ability to zoom in more than what my scope can. Now, the reason why I have those is so that I can, when in Discord or VOP or Skype or you know, whatever voice program you use, I can let my friends who are tankers or infantrymen or even just type it in chat. You know, it's like, sup guys, you know, there's a recon, but, 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 but by the time I've sent the message, that recon's fired three or four times and killed 
two or three infantrymen when it's just quicker for me to go bop, spot, snipe, dead. Literally in that order. Bop, snap, you know, literally bring it up, mark, shoot, dead. And I feel that recon should... Now, again, this goes in tandem with, with, with the mechanic that's already built into the game. So this wouldn't take much on, on Reto's end of the spectrum here. And that is the recon badge. Under tactical, you've got tactical, duh, defense, medic, and recon. I believe that if you spot an enemy vehicle, if you spot an enemy infantryman, and someone or something kills it, you should get a portion of spotting EXP that goes towards your recon badge. It makes sense. Think about this, okay? If I'm in a, if I'm being an Anne Frank, and I'm sorry if that offends someone, but if I'm being an Anne Frank hiding in an attic, okay, and I can hear a whole bunch of American GI or Soviet troopers, you know, in a firefight with someone else, and I spot that T-34 or that IS-1 or whatever, and I spot that heavy tank that's been wailing on the infantryman or whatever, I can't take that tank out. This isn't this isn't sniper elite. I can't just shoot the gas tank and make the tank explode. Although that would be freaking cool. But the point is, I'm spotting this tank. It's not going anywhere. Okay, it's not moving. It's it's still there, just lobbing he and you know, looking at you or you M M18 Hellcats, you know, and and our tanker finally takes it out. He finally goes, oh, it's right there, boom, and actually damages it, takes it out. You know, so that our infantry can now move up. But I didn't give up my position as being a recon, or recon, as the Germans called it, because I did my job. But what do I get for it in-game-wise? Nothing. I get nothing for being who I am and what I do. I get nothing. Does that sound even remotely fair? Huh, Fearless? Does that sound fair to you? Not really. I was kind of thinking the same thing. They need to give recon something more, because currently, as I see it, recons are basically just people that run around with bolt actions with with an 8 times sniper with like a 100 times weight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, exactly. Recon have been slowly fucked over, all because of one infantry weapon. And I have that weapon, so I can say for a fact it is that one weapon that, that messed us up. It's a Soviet weapon, and my soldier, Igor, has it. And it, no, it's not the AVS-36. It would be this thing, the PTRD 1941. That is the reason, and the sole reason only, why German recon's weapons are so bad. Now go ahead and say, wait, uh, hang on, that's not true. Yes, it is true. How? Because they even turned around and said in their dev streams that the, the PTRD is considered a bolt action weapon, and so any nerfs that happen to the PTRD has to happen to every bolt action. So the Car 98, the 1903, the, the Moisen the Gant. Because it is a bolt action, and within the game's engine the way the game's engine is designed, when you modify one bolt action, you have to modify all the bolt actions. You can't modify the weapons individually. Which is just fucking retarded. That should be a sign that you are using a very limited engine. The fact that you have to nerf three other weapons to counterbalance the PTRD because fighter pilots were complaining that they were getting shot out the sky. Well, I'm sorry, a plane is a light weapon. The PTRD is a light weapon, is, is, is an anti-weapon, anti-material anti weapon. It's designed to take out light tanks, APCs, jeeps, planes. That was its job. This is why the PTRD, well, a variant of it, was strapped inside the nose of Yak-7s. And guess what it did? It shot down planes. So don't hate the gun because it's doing what it does. Hate the fighter pilots that are stupid enough to try and strafe a squad of three with PTRDs. 
plain and simple. There's, the, uh, there's, no, there's a golden rule I like to follow, which is if you know that there is a better soldier who is more well equipped than you in a specific area, avoid that area at all costs. Plain and simple. Don't be around him. The sky's big. Don't be around them. You know, plain and simple. Worst case scenario, let the infantry roll up. Let the infantry deal with them. They are infantry. That was their job. It's infantry versus infantry, tank versus tank, plane versus plane. That is how the game is meant to be played. Just because infantry found a way to help support their, their fighter pilots or, or their tanks, okay, doesn't mean it should be nerfed. Granted, it, it is a weapon that should have always been fired from a prone, sandbagged position. And in this game, we're just shoulder firing it like it, it it's not. No, no. You try and shoulder fire that kind of caliber of weapon, you'll have no shoulder left. You'll have no arm left. Okay. Um, now, I, I again, there, there was talk on, on Reddit and the forums that the PTRD and the DP-28 and the MG-42 and the MG-34 and, and the, the Browning Automatic should only be fired from a prone position, which makes sense. That does make sense. Okay, because the weapons were majority fired from a prone position. But the way Reto's got their maps currently designed, that's just not feasible. It's just not feasible. Okay, because, again, let me go back to my German recon here. What, do you think the PTRD nerfs was, were valid? You're asking me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, I don't know. I think the, P, I think the PTRD did need a nerf at uh, some point, but they, I think they kind of nerfed it way too much. <laughs> uh, I think that... I know, they're, I know they said that they can't work on bipods or whatever, but honestly, in my opinion, they, sh uh, they should just... Let it be to where if you can set up the PTRD somewhere with a bipod, then you can fire it like that. It props to them if they're able to shoot pla if they're able to shoot planes and stuff while it's zoned in its bipod position. Because as you as you mentioned, realistically, you wouldn't be able to stand up and shoot the uh, shoot a gun that's taller than you. <laughs> exactly, it's like it's like pictures of the elephant gun. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen that weapon, but it was actually banned worldwide because it was used to shoot like 200 to 300 birds in one shot. It, it was huge. It was like a huge freaking blunderbuss cannon. Picture like the old Big Bertha rail, train rail cannon, but a blunderbuss. Yes, yes. And hunters used to use it in Africa. They, they, they'd scare up you know, pheasants and quail and whatnot from the brush and wait for them to get, up, you know, get together in a swarm and then just go... And then just... You'd see entire species of birds just almost eradicated. And I, it, it's scary as it is. But I, I honestly feel that, that Recon needs some love. I'm not asking to r remove the sway, okay? First things first, I'm not asking to remove the sway. That's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I mean, we, we asked for it in, in the forums. We asked for it on the subreddit. We asked for it everywhere. What did we get? Camo. And then, I'm not going to say names, but someone on their live stream turns and says, we listen to our community. No, you don't. Don't talk out your ass. All right? Seriously. I, I know your eyes are brown because you're full of shit. You need a movement. Okay? You don't listen to your player base because if you did, we would have, we, we, we would have told you, please unfuck the bolt action sniper rifles. Okay? Because everyone now has switched over to semi-automatics with the, with the advent of the Scout 2 barrels. I, I I honestly feel that the Scout 2 barrel was the most stupidest move that they could have done. I get it. They were trying to make uh, uh, the, snipe, the, the starter weapons more viable. But here's the, here's the problem. You've made the starter weapons too good. To the point where no one wants to try the MP34 or the MP18 or the MP40 or the Thompson or the Grease Gun or the blah, 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 Soviet weapons. Because there's so many of them, you know. No, nobody wants to do that. And another thing, why can't we have a little tab that separates the weapons by an you know, assault rifle, light machine gun, SMG. So we can just find what we need instead of like a player like me who has everything unlocked, scrolling for 20 years to get to what we need. You know, um, like I said, it, it, I feel, 
I, I can understand the direction that they're trying to take the game. I do. I understand. But for me, if they're going to stick with this limited engine, and this is the thing that is ultimately limiting the game. And I know what I'm talking about when I say graphics engines, because uh, um, uh, unbeknownst to some of you guys, I'm in the middle of working with CryEngine and Unity 2.0 to make my own first person shooter to physically show you guys what I'm actually trying to talk about um, and for you guys watching the video you, you're seeing it pop up on screen now um, you're you're literally gonna see the editor and everything else and the map map we're designing and everything else and, and granted it's just it's in its testing phase it's in its infancy we still haven't got all the correct models or anything yet I've got my modeler on it thank you funky I've got funky on it already he's on that thing like a bloodhound you know, um, he's taking uh, models that were designed for like Maya and all these other engines and converting them to be used in CryEngine for me. Um, so I've got nothing but mad respect and big shout out to you, Funky. Funky's also going to be our multiplayer server hoster, host provider. So he, and he's going to be doing that free of charge. At, at, you know, he's not charging us anything for that. So again, big thank you, Funky. So if any of you guys out there are looking to host your own uh, servers and whatnot, I will uh, post Funky's uh, uh, Discord information in the video description so you guys can hit him up directly and find out payment plans and schedules and whatnot for yourself to see if it suits your business needs um, he's also in the process of sorting out the uh, website for us um, and he's going to be hosting the website physically hosting the website uh, with him so I know the website will have a 24 7 uptime um, but uh, yeah as you can see that I'm using CryEngine guys um, I know what I'm talking about I'm not talking out of my ass Okay, let me just load the map. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, some some people who do podcasts and bitch about this game engine and that get that game engine know nothing about game engines. Um, I I know the actual limitations of the Reto engine that they're using, and it's a, it, it this is just I mean what you're seeing on screen right now is just a minor limitation. We're we're still working on the textures and stuff. So yes, and like I said, it's rough. This is rough, and this is what I did. This is what I did personally, okay? I designed the majority of this map with, with some help some, of some other people, and I did this in three days. Three days. That's how good the CryEngine system is. I've got an, a map very similar to this that I've, I've started working on in Unity. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to graphics engines. Now, Fearless, he's a coder. He, he, you do what, is it C++ or C++? Uh, JavaScript. <laughs> ah, Java. Hey, dude, nothing but mad respect, man. Java can be a pain in the ass. I, I, I hated it when um, Squarespace, not a sponsor, um, when Squarespace first came out, because all they did was Java, you know, and they wanted you to, to, to code your entire website in Java, you know? Yeah. And it was a real pain in the ass trying to find someone who does. I'm trying to find someone who does Python scripting um, because I want to work on the um, security aspect end of the game. The multiplayer side, we're using Python scripting and, and embedded uh, uh, packet security design. So basically, if someone's modifying their client to give themselves infinite ammo, you know, the moment they pull the trigger, our server would say, no, you've only got 99 bullets, not 100. Why do you still have 100? Beep, beep, kicked. Do you see what I'm saying? Using a Python script, you know, on, on the, on a, and literally it would just be, and that's the thing. Unlike most free-to-play games, it will just ban you outright. No, 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 we'll, we'll allow you to keep playing. You're just only going to be playing with other cheaters. So, plain and simple. You're going to be on your own little map. All your names are going to be changed to Cheaty McCheat Face. You know? And, and, and like I said, we're going to publicly humiliate you uh, 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 until you say, well, fuck it, I'll play fair. And then when you decide to play fair, you send in an appeals letter with a video apologizing for ruining the game for other people. And that video will go up on YouTube. And we'll let the people decide. If you get more thumbs up, you're allowed to play again. If you get a, if you get thumbs down, you're banned. You're stuck in the cheaters division. You know, that's that's what I want to do. You know, but anyway, like I said, guys, I'm just showing you. I, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to engines. So when I say that the, the, the Retomoto engine that, 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 they, that Reto's using is the key issue. That is the limitation that they have. Um, so like I said, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking out my ass. I'm not blowing smoke up your skirt. I know what I'm talking about when I say this. Okay? And I'm telling you. They overreached. 
th th this 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 is ultimately my, my biggest beef. I'm I'm putting all my cards on the table. Okay. My biggest beef is I love recons. Recons are my favorite class in Heroes and Generals. And mostly because a good recon can t change the tide of a battle. Okay? And I'm not talking about the Mark Wahlberg wannabe guy sitting up on a rock with his camouflage gold badge, which you see I don't have. You know? I, I don't own the camouflage gold perk. You know, I, I don't own it, see? Don't own it, see? It's grayed out. I don't own it. I'm nowhere near getting it, see? But they know when to move. They'll, they'll kill two, three people and realize, wait, where's the rest of the infantry? Fuck, they're repositioned to come after me. Got to move. You know? They reposition. They do what they're supposed to do. They don't just sit there all day going, ha, 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 fuck my team, fuck my team. It's all about my kill, ca my kill count. It's all about my KDR. No, dude, okay? Your, your penis size is not equal to your KDR, okay? Plain and simple. It's not. If there was one thing that you could change, Fearless, about Heroes and Generals, the one core thing that you could change that would that you think would breathe breathe new life into Heroes and Generals, what do you think it would be? Hmm. <laughs> Let me think about this for a minute. Okay. Um, a, a game engine aside, okay? Take take the game engine out. Game engine aside. Okay, you say they stick with this horrid game engine. Okay, say they stick with this PS1 horrible game engine. Okay, I feel that their limitations is going to honestly be the fact that, the, as I pointed out, recon get no experience for being a recon. I mean, both my infantrymen, and I am not joking you, okay? Jan Schmidt, okay? My infantryman has the freaking recon badge unlocked. If, right there, see, he has the camouflage badge. And freaking uh, Frederick is, is almost got his down the line. See? I, I honestly feel I will have the recon badge, the, 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 the camouflage gold badge, unlocked on my infantryman more than I will my recon. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I'll be playing my recon less. I don't. I, in fact, play my recon more. It has to do with the fact that the, the limitations of how to obtain that badge. Okay? Recon don't base rush. Who base rushes with a bolt action with a 4X or an 8X scope? Because if you read the, the syntax of what it says, uh, being in the front line of an assault will give you an advantage over your enemy. Points for this ribbon are earned by not getting killed, duh. Capturing objectives and long range sniper kills. Now, the long range sniper kills is full of shit. Okay? As you know as well as I know, I've got an 800, 900 meter shot kills with my sniper rifle. It is exactly 838 meters away from the top of the church to B4. Okay, and I was killing GIs at B4, the second floor with the broken wall. I was killing GIs from there while laying down prone on the roof of the church. So over 800 meters, and I got bupkis for EXP. Nothing. I got more EXP capturing a point, leaving the point, letting the enemy take the point, kill the enemy, then retake the point back and rinse and repeat doing it that way than I ever did through sniping. So that whole long-range sniper kill crap is a load of shite. Okay? You only get EXP for the recon ribbon, which is just... Now, let, me, let that sink in. By not getting killed and catching objectives, that's it. The sniper, the sniper part has nothing to do with recon. How fucking... Stupid does that sound? I'm not going to use the R word, but how freaking stupid does that sound, Fearless? No, I think it's terrible. <laughs> what? Well, uh, especially because recon are meant to be snipers, as you've mentioned before, and in my opinion, they should be already have the recon badge to begin with, and because they're meant to be camouflaged and hidden. They're not going to be like, "Hey, I'm over here, shoot me." It, exactly, or at least give us a bronze and a silver. You know, the bro the bronze being, you know, after X amount of kills, 
you're then visible. Silver is after X amount of kills, you're visible. And gold being no amount of kills, and you stay invisible. Do you see what I'm saying? So say if I've, say yeah. I've got camouflage bronze, okay? Which is after three kills, you know, I'm visible. You know, people, people get a kill cam until I die, and then it resets. Do you see what I'm saying? Or, or, or as silver, I get eight kills. Then if I die, it resets. Do you see what I'm saying? And gold, it never resets. I can just keep killing and killing and killing and killing and killing. Which, do you see what I'm saying? That's a fair and balanced set right there. It would allow starter recons to at least be able to be effective. You know? I mean, you've got the kill assist system in the game. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, I winged him, someone else killed him. Oh, I get one EXP. One frigging EXP. So, okay, so why can't you add that in for the binoculars? Yeah, you, you've... Something also vulnerable to ask, add for the recon, is just, or for any, for any infantry, but especially for the recon, is that if you spot something, you should get some XP for it. Especially recon, because as their name intends, they're reconning. <laughs> exactly, you're doing your job. But no, according to the, according to everyone at Reddit, this gaping whale-sized hole in their anal fissure, you know, seems to have escaped them. This pink elephant wearing a top hat and a monocle, going indubitably, sir, literally is ignored by everyone. It's right there. The mechanic is already built into the freaking game. The whole boop beep, and that's another thing. Is it just me? Or is it whenever you spot someone, you get that stupid beep beep noise, you never see the red dot if you're scoped in? It depends. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I, I never get it. I never get it. I'll hear the blip blip, and I'm looking right there, and I just don't see the red dot. I don't see the parts like, okay, they've activated their Klingon cloaking field from Star Trek. You know? You'll see it if you're if you're uh, aiming down the sights and if you're staring dead at the blip, you won't see it. But if you if you look away from it, you'll see it. Uh, well, I don't know why that's the thing, but, but I mean, exactly. And then what's worse is it throws your shot off because yeah. you then have to put the rifle back on target. And like they said, they've already always said that there isn't an, an internalized crosshair when you scope in. You just don't see it. So the spread, you know what I mean? Have you, have you ever wondered why when you've got like an AVS with a scope on it? And you go tap, tap, like the third or fourth shot goes sailing off and then a different postal code, you know? Yeah. That's because even scoped in, you've still got a sway. This is why there's that stupid badge, which is uh, not turn cone. Um, where is it? It's not turn cone. Hang on. I've, I've got, I've, uh, there you go, dead eye. Faster con concentration on crosshairs. Getting used to your weapon sights and training regularly lets you establish a sight picture a bit faster. That's what they're talking about, is the sight picture. So even though when you're hip firing, you see that little crosshair that uh, even then sometimes randomly disappears, no one knows why, you know, there's also a hidden one inside when you scope. Even if you're using iron sights, okay, this is how they detect aim bots, by the way. Dun 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 dun. This, yeah, I used it. I on like half of my soldiers. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. This is how they detect if a person is using a aimbot. Has nothing to do with the name of the program or or what files have been modified for DX whatever. It has to do with the fact that they check the internalized, unused GUIs. There's no user generated user interface showing you these crosshairs. There's no press tilde key typing command thing. You know how during the dev streams they type in a certain thing and then they've got like laser beams that show you where the bullets went? Yeah. Well they've got that being checked on the server back end. So if you've got an MG42 that has the spread of a Nat's dick, okay, while aiming down sights, they know that you're doing something fishy. Okay, it has, and it, it doesn't matter. That's what they count a check when it comes to reports. So you can stand there and report the same person again and again and again and again. Because it happens to me all the time with my Thompson. Okay, as, you, as you've seen firsthand, I will go to, fuck it, I'm going to A. Why? Because that's where they're going to be. But, but, but I'm using a Thompson, dude. I'll be okay. Oh, okay. You, you've seen it yourself. I went on, what, a, 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 a 16, 17, 20 kill spree on my very first life? using the Thompson, a stock Thompson, I might add. Then I upgraded the trigger in the spring, and all of a sudden it becomes the next P90. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started on the P90 in iron sights. That gun is just gorgeous. But but the point is, okay, 
You've seen it yourself firsthand. You've you, you've stormed the beaches with me, and it's like careful. Grab, 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 grab. Okay, you got him. Yep, yeah, I got him. You know. You know, me and Mustang Sally got him, which is the name of my Thompson. No, it's the name of my M1 carbine. Uh, what's oh, Scarmaker. Scarmaker's the, the name of my Thompson. And and that's my whole point, okay? It is, and again, people will say, oh, oh well, I report... I, I've had offline messages, okay, from people telling me that they've reported me, and they'd be like, good luck keeping your account, you hacking son. I'm like, dude, I'm a live streamer on Twitch. Here's my link. I don't hack. You just got owned. Okay? This, again, and that's another thing. I don't literally call them jabronis and owned and whatever. I'm not like other streamers. If someone kills me in a game, I'm like, good kill, good kill. I, I now let it go. You know? In that one moment, you were better than me. Okay? Yeah, I find it funny because, as you know, I queue against you often. Yeah. So I always see on the on the enemy, on, on the team chat, Copris is hacking, or like, finally I, got, I killed the cheater, and I'm just like, no, he's streaming. Go watch. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I get that. I get called that all the time, and I, I eventually, and this is how I know about the internalized spread system, because I asked uh, 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 Gargamel, because Gargamel was the one who investigated the allegation, and Gargamel's like. No, guys, he's not cheating. He's just good. You know? Now, now be fine. Be fine is fucking a god in this game. <laughs> that guy is he's a... Fun to watch. He is. He's a fucking god in this game. Big shout out to you, be fine. Love you, brother. You know this. Uh, him, him and Blake. I love you, Blake. Dude, you're a pain in my ass, especially when you're on your Soviet and you're using your AVS. But I have nothing but love for you, Blake. You know, nothing but love, brother. And, and that's the thing. Do you see what I'm saying? I, 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 I may sometimes jokingly report someone. You know, especially if it's like Blake. I do it all the time, you know. Because I know Blake doesn't hack. Blake knows he doesn't hack. And so does Gargamel. Gargamel's watched me play and go to report someone. And he's immediately closed the report because he knows I'm just joking. Because I'll, I'll even turn and say, ah, 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 just kidding. You know, I'll, I'll even put JK. You know, like, just kidding. You know, they know I'm just joking around. They know I'm just messing about. But, there, again, I, I, I know that there are hacks for the game out there. I do know this. Uh, it, there's hacks for any game. It, 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 at the end of the day, there is no eSports for this game. And I don't ever see that there ever will be any kind of true eSports for this game. Okay? One... Reto's not taking this game serious enough in order for it to become an esports. And I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but they are. Now, if they did like a tournament, you know, if they announced the, you know, the, the first annual Heroes and Generals uh, 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 tournament, you know, and had a, a, a select set of maps, be fun. you know, have clans going against each other. Exactly. Do you see what I'm saying? I think that you know what I, I'm honestly thinking about contacting Robotron, their head of head of PR and, and whatnot, and, and asking them and saying to them, look, do you mind if I can rally up some of your older streamers like Cotton Gamer, myself, uh, hell, even get freaking uh, um, 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 Fly Daily to come back because Fly used to play Heroes and Generals. You know, if I can get Fly to come back just for the tournament, just for a namesake, just just for namesake, okay? Think about it, okay? You've got Be Fine, me, Poop Drip. You've got freaking and I hate that guy's name. Just, ugh. you know, <laughs> you, you, you've got even you, okay? And enter the tournament, okay? And and it's a round, it's a knockout round robin. You know, you can either play the objectives or or you, do you see what I'm saying? And, and I, I I honestly think. And have Reto stream it on their Twitch channel, as well as the streamers themselves stream it. And maybe even have someone like Cotton Gamer, you know, or myself, who've been knocked out, you know, commentate, co-commentate on the actual what's going on. You know what I mean? I think it would be amazing. And purposely, purposely put in a stream delay of like 30 seconds to like, you know, to, to 45 seconds to make sure there's no stream sniping and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And the, the top prize is the top team, everyone in the top team gets like 3,000 gold. Yeah. You know? Or, or a unique skin. Because you know how... how and Because I, I think I've still got the skin on my Thompson. Um, 
Is it my Tom? No, like to see them to add it was not. Everyone. It's not my Thompson. It's my MP40. Sorry, it's my MP40. Uh, on my MP40, I've got the Xmas skin. You know, you know how they they came out with the Christmas skins. I remember. You know, I, yeah, I've got the the the, the GE Christmas skin on my to uh, on my MP40. Well, they come out with a skin that says, you know, first annual H and G tournament winner. Yeah. You know, and that's given out to the winners. You know, so they've got like a team unity thing going on. You know, I honestly think it would bring back some of the players if they did that. You know, yeah. and, and while the tournament's going on, do like a double EXP event. You know, so even if you're not in the tournament and you're still playing, you know, you you can and I, I, they've got the prototype server so it's not like they can't have backup servers running have them do a tournament only server so the general population can't get in and ruin ruin the tournament you know what i mean yeah and i i honestly feel that this would help i think this would help uh, I, oh betty you know everyone's always wanted a heroes and generals hoodie you know and when yeah. cotton got his hoodie you know everyone went fucking ballistic Okay. Could you imagine if they picked a random part, a random winner who's watching the stream on the Heroes and Generals channel, you know, and just and sent them a hoodie, you know, that would be pretty. Oh fuck yeah, I'd wear it during the stream. You know, I would, I would wear it during my during my freaking stream. You know, that's what I'm talking about. This is the thing that I'm talking about. This is this is what Reto's missing out on. Okay. You want to know why a lot of PUBG style shooters are are, are, are big right now? Because they're advertising, they're doing tournaments. They've got streamers like Doctor Disrespect and 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 oh god, I keep forgetting his other name. He's he's got this fat face, round podgy son of a bitch. He's a, he looks like a, a an Italian. I can't remember his name, but he he ended up he ended up playing with PewDiePie, not PewDiePie. Um, the twat who filmed the dead body in Japan. Um, I don't know. Oh, um, I know what you mean. Logan Paul. Logan Paul. Yeah, he ended up doing a co-stream with Logan Paul and his entire fan base turned on him like fucking sharks. You know? And he ends up going, well, fuck you all, I don't need you all. And literally, the next day, he's begging his viewers to come back. <laughs> literally, on Twitter, he, on Twitter, he might as well have been stuck a sign up saying, blowing every guy, you know, blowing everyone like for, for, a, free, for, for a free view on a pop. You know, no, that's not shots fired, but it's the truth. Okay, look at his tweet line. I'm not lying to you. He literally started begging his his viewers to come back. Well, I'm just saying, think about it, okay? All you've got to do is reach out to streamers like Cotton, myself. Hell, even um, Erotic, okay? I'm pretty sure Erotic would, would, would love to jump in and, and, and play as the Soviets, you know, with it with his freaking AVS-36. Knowing him, is going to be re he'll retardedly call it an AK-47, you know? Yeah. This is an AK-47, dude. This is the Kalashnikov, dude. We don't need the M4. I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Shut up. You just got owned by an M4. You know? But I feel that this would actually help Reto if they did this. This, this would be my, my advice. If I got invited to the next content creators group meeting thing, which, if you ever noticed, they haven't even announced the next one yet because all of their old streamers don't stream the game anymore. Rickety Row doesn't stream it. Cotton doesn't stream it. Um, Cow doesn't stream it. Um, B -fine. B Fine doesn't. Waxy doesn't. All these guys don't stream it. I mean, Waxy, okay, not, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's uh, Torkov. Tor yeah, yeah, Torkov. He, he's another guy. That, uh, he's from. He, 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 he likes to claim, claim that he's the, um, the best U.S. soldier. The best, the best U.S. infantry guy in here is in generals. Well, yeah, it's because probably you're the only one left playing it. Um, what? Oh, there are some guys, uh, but Mafugan doesn't stream it either. Yeah, my, my fucking don't stream it no more. Um, Fiery Pet doesn't even stream it anymore. Yeah, Tachaikin. the Tachaikin. that's his name. He's got the weirdest name. It's like a. It sounds like it's Klingon, you know. <laughs> Seriously, it sounds like it's Klingon. Yeah. Um. And so, here, let me just... Oh, that's right, yeah, a Fiery Pit is uh, playing that new Hell, Hell's Let Loose, which, yeah. which is a buy-in. You have to buy into it, like he did Tarkov. Um, but, yeah, it, it, the, the, the Thiarkin, or whatever his name is. Um, anyway, he's the only guy that's left that streams here as in generals that I know of. Um, I know Cotton updated his, but never logged in. 
Yeah. And like I said, I I on I personally feel, okay, I personally feel that if we got all the old old streamers together, you know, like the old literally do like an old farts with guns kind of thing, like I do with my stream, get all the old streamers together, and literally tell them, look, or even do streamers versus fans. I do like a streamers versus fans tournament, you know? Yeah. Where, I mean, right now, honestly, if Rado contacted me and said, here's some free gold codes to give away, and, you know, honestly, I would, I'm not going to lie, I would stream their game to, just to give away the gold codes to the player base. You know, I wouldn't keep them for myself because I know some streamers actually kept the... See, Red, Reto, and full disclosure, okay? Reto has given me gold codes to give away in the past. Okay, they have. And they gave me two 1,000 gold codes and three 500 gold codes. Okay? And every other streamer I know that got the exact same codes, they never gave away the 1,000 gold codes except for Cal. Yeah. And I won one of Cal's codes. Now, that was a legitimate thing. I won it fair and square. The, the, the bot picked me. I took the code. I used it. But I gave my thousand gold codes away. I didn't keep them. I could have kept them, but I chose not to. I chose to give them away. In fact, I turn and says, if we break fifty viewers, I'll give away a thousand gold. All of a sudden, pop up, I'm up to like sixty viewers. You know, and I'm like, if we break two hundred viewers, I'll give another thousand gold away. Pop up, hundred and ninety something, barely, barely two hundred. Like, no, 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 doesn't say two hundred. You know, do you see what I'm saying? And I would, like I said, I was interacting with the chat and everything else, and people were sending me friend invites. I'm still getting people sending me friend requests today. I mean, literally, just as we're talking right now, where is it? Uh, uh, Maxis13 just sent me a friend request. And, and, and like I said, I, I've, I've, I've got, uh, seriously, I'm, look, look, let's just look at my, my friends list, okay? There's you, uh, Hi574, Kel, uh, Kel Guitar. Andorus, let's see, Afro Jester. I haven't seen Jester in forever. Um, Armor Dreadlocks. Haven't seen ATX Shadow. Blake the Cookie. I played with Blake the other day. Uh, Broken Skills. I haven't seen him and him in forever. Caboose. I've seen him the other day. Uh, cool Guy. Haven't seen him. Um, let's see. Haven't seen Smithers in a long time. <laughs> haven't. I haven't seen Smithers in forever. Fuzzy Pink Slippers. Haven't seen them. Um, Galaxy Grits, haven't seen them. Um, who else? Uh, Cal. Cal hasn't been online. He's been he's been inactive for almost two years. Yeah. J Man, haven't seen him and him in forever. Uh, who else? Uh, Beaver, haven't seen him. Anaku, I played World of Tanks with him the other day. Uh, Measure Schmidt nine thousand, not seen him in forever. Fancy Pants, he comes into my stream, comes into my Discord. Not seen him in Heroes and Generals for a while. Um, Noon Bear, Napushi, N Nero Pro. God, I haven't seen Nero Pro in freaking months. Um, Pen Pandemics, I know Pandemics currently right now is doing a grind on on War Thunder. Uh, Pitbull, who else? Primal Instinct, uh, Rickety Row. Uh, 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 Rickty. I mean, Rickty comes into my chat. Um, let's see, Scotty. I haven't seen Scotty in a while. Lux, 60s Spider-Man. Um, I know 60s is doing a lot of, uh, Tarkov and other games right now. Um, Sakura. I mean, he's doing Tar uh, Escape from Tarkov too. Do you see what I'm saying? Unsafe Snowman. Not seen him in forever. Um, Whitebread. Not seen him in forever. Um, Gaming Goat. Not seen Goat in forever. Um, these are all really cool people that I would, I would, I, I, including you, dude. I would love to have you on my tournament team. You know, if they yeah. if they did like a five v five, you know, yeah. that would be fucking awesome, dude. Could you imagine that a five v five, freaking like on a, on depot encounter or something? You know, where you're forced to fight. Yeah. You know, not none of this. I'm gonna sit on a rock and be Mark fucking Wahlberg crap. <laughs> you know, oh man, that would be fucking amazing. A five v five depot encounter only. Um, what else? Uh, no grenades. Okay. No grenades, no bolt actions. And knife only. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Think about it, okay? So it's a 5v5 tourna tournament idea. 5v5, depot encounter only. No grenades, no bolt actions. Yeah. Okay. I'm telling you right now. 
The American team would, would consist of maybe one or two M1, M1 Grands set for, set for two-shot kill and a bunch of Thompsons, maybe M1, M2 carbines, um, maybe grease guns. Germans would be set up with Sturmgewehrs, maybe one MG34, MG42, and a whole bunch of MP40s. Yeah. Russians would be set up with PPSH 41s. <laughs> That's all they would need. <laughs> like three minutes later, they still don't have to reload. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I said, I think it would be a great idea. I would love to float that idea to Robotron. I would. I would love to float that tournament idea. I mean, it would be freaking amazing. You know? And, and like I said, what, what you do is you do a 5v5 you know, and the winning faction gets a special skin. You know, whether it be for you know, a stone gewehr, whatever. You know, yeah. And and it would literally be, you know, like a little. It'd be like a regular skin, so it wouldn't be really hard for the graphics artist. But on like the shoulder stock or something, you would see like the the heroes and generals logo burnt into the wood, and it that would, would nice. and it would say like tournament winner or something. You know. Yeah. So it's not a lot of work for the graphic artists to do, you know, and it can only be acquired by tournament winners, you know, yeah. and, and like I said, and and I, I think it would be freaking amazing. And everyone, of course, you know, everyone, you know, first place, everyone gets like three thousand gold. Second place, everyone gets fifteen hundred gold. You know, uh, 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 sorry, second place, fifteen hundred gold. Third place, everyone gets like a thousand gold. You know, for all the participants, you know. Which would promote them spending it and maybe buying some more. Just saying. Yeah. And at the same time, you could also use the tournament as like an advertisement. You know, maybe even set up a H and G swag store where you can sell T-shirts, posters, cups, mugs, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll bring a lot of people into the game. How fun! One thing that I'd like them to see is like kind of like what you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. but it, I think I think World of Tanks does this. I'm not sure. It's like where they kind of have like a map, and then uh, all the clans have different controls of like different areas and stuff like that. Granted, I think the game would need to get a little bit more people to do this. But like we just like uh, like pro uh, more prominent clans. Like for example, maybe this one, and then like let's say uh, there's one really large German clan a while ago. I can't remember what they were though. Uh -huh. In war. And uh, and then we just kind of, like kind of have like a like a battle to see like who takes control more. I know that's kind of how war works currently, but I don't think that a lot of people just kind of died off in war because war hasn't really seemed worth it mm -hmm. because it, the turnouts haven't really been that well. And it's kind of against the Germans. And yeah, the Germans did fight a two-front war, but it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And also another thing I would like to see is this one gets overlooked a lot. I kind of was overlooking this too earlier until I just I just now kind of thought of it. It's optimizations. <laughs> Their servers are really bad, and I felt bad because uh, there's there's some people that play this game from South Africa, and they have and Reddo has no servers in South Africa. Yeah. They have to get like 300 ping, and they put up with it. I'm like, how? And, and it, yeah, also, and the FPS as well is really bad. And what's worse is if that poor South African guy gets onto the map first, everyone has shit ping because he has shit ping. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think there should be a centralized server hub in like, the US for the US players, the Canadian players, the South American players. Um, I think there should be one for the Southeast Asia, like what, like what World of Tanks does. In World of Tanks, you've got World of Tanks EU, which covers you know the, the, the Eastern European. Then we, we, you've got the US servers, then you've got the Southeast Asian servers. So everywhere around the world is covered. You know what I mean? I, th yeah. I think that Reto could do something similar to that. Um, I really do. Um, but at the same time, like I said, what? Just, just, just think about it though. What if they did like a StarCraft-ish style tournament? You know, you get one or two really good rounds in, best of you know, best of three rounds, you know, kind of thing. And while the rounds are, are rotating or whatnot, yeah, you know, I'm not talking like use it like an esports arena where they've got the, the computers set up and the players come in wearing jerseys and shit. No, no, no. I'm talking about like a, a simple, you know, simple started up tournament, you know, and, and go from there. And eventually, if it turns into a, a, a really big thing like StarCraft tournaments do, you know, fly some of the players in, fly some of the teams into Copenhagen, you know, and, and go from there. 
you know, and, and it would be, okay, so we've got Team Cotton versus Team Deceptive, you know, and do, do like a pre-fight thing where you've got like the, the teams meet in shaking hands kind of thing. I'm just going to stare Cotton down and look at him and say, my beard's better than yours. <laughs> You know, kind of thing, like let the best beard win. Or, or have a side bet, you know, whoever loses has to shave the beard. You know, yeah. kind of, and raise money for charity. Do, you know, you know how uh, a Games Done Quick or GDQ does their annual tournament, you know, if, if someone, make, if they make certain uh, a donation caps, you know, a charity, you know, and it all goes, uh, and I, I understand that most uh, uh, charities don't ever see every penny, but the point is, you know, I, I, would, I would flat out, do, like during the press, I'd say, okay, look, plain and simple. I'm making a bet right now. I bet a hundred dollars that my team beats Cotton. Okay, Cotton's team, and Cotton match it, and we put the beards on the line. So whoever loses pays and has to shave their their beard off. You know, and I'm pretty sure people are like, oh, I win, I want in on that action, and I want in on that action, and whoever wins, the money gets donated to a charity of their choice. You know. I think that would me. I would put it for habitats for humanity for the people out in Puerto Rico because they're still re rebuilding from the fucking hurricane, man. You know, like I said, I, 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 you know me. I've done charity streams for freaking forever since I started streaming on Twitch. You know, and that's what I'm trying to explain is I, I, I just think the reason why the drop off in the player base is because of games like Escape from Tarkov and whatnot. Yes, granted, they're fads, and that's what they are. They are a fad. EFT is a fad. Okay, yay. They added, they added a new map. Is there scavs on that map? No. Can you play as a scav on that map? No. Then I don't want to be on that map. Okay. So you've changed the meta for this and that. And when it, If you constantly keep changing the game with every update, okay, you're trying to refresh the fad and it's not working. To me, Escape from Tarkov is nothing but a fad. Okay, I occasionally play Escape from Tarkov in my off time. Okay, and you know what I'm doing? I'm playing as a scav. I, I'm going to be doing a YouTube uh, uh, a series called A Scav's Life, where you, I'm literally playing as a scav and I narrate what's going through my head as I'm playing. Do you see? Yeah. And that's what it's all, that's what it's called. It's just called A Scav's Life. That's all I play as, as I play as a scav. That's it. I don't even play as on my main. My main's like level three. You know, seriously, I, that's all I am is like level three, a level three nobody. Yet you see games like Iron Sight, where I've got you know my HK four one seven already maxed out at level twenty nine. My MP, you know, my P ninety is almost maxed out at twenty two. You see why? Because I enjoy playing that kind of game. Yeah. I get it. Escape from Tarkov is supposed to be a survival shooter. There's nothing survival about it. Okay, to, to sum up Escape from Tarkov, shit fucking servers, shit fucking ping, shit fucking AI, because the AI, oh, there's no leg meta. Okay, where did he just shoot me? In the leg. So there's no fucking leg meta then, is there? Don't talk out your ass, Nikita. Okay, don't talk out your ass. And what's even, what's, even, what's even worse? What's even worse? I'm a scav. I have a fucking band-aid and a pistol. And I've got to go up against a guy wearing four fast MT, fully kitted out M4 with a squad of seven of his cock-sucking buddies. And you expect me to survive that shit? <laughs> Fuck yeah. you. Fuck you. I'd rather wrestle a goddamn bear. <laughs> Plain and simple. I'd survive, I'd, I'd survive longer wrestling the fucking bear. You know, just. Added bears. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't already added wildlife that's gonna fucking just shit on you or kill you or some crap. You know, like I said, EFTs are fad. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to know who's noticed this? Devil Dog Gamer. Okay. I'm a huge fan of Devil. Great streamer. Great YouTube content creator. Very much like Fly Daily. And as you know, I, again, full disclosure, I've done content with Fly. Fly's an amazing guy. Um, but Devil Dog noticed that it was a fad. He's noticed it's a fad. This is why he's been winding, weaning off doing Escape from Tarkov content. That's why he streams Armor 3 Exile. He doesn't stream EFT that much anymore because he's realized it's just a fucking fad. It's, the game's going nowhere in a hurry. If you look on the Reddit and the forums, it's, it's literally, you can see tumbleweeds roll across your screen as you go to the fucking, because... The, 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 the devs never answer any question correctly. They give you cryptic answers like, I need a fucking decoder ring, like I'm going to summon Voltron or some shit. 
just to get a fucking straight answer from them about the M1, about the M14. Yeah. Okay, the M14 was supposed to be uh, Peacekeeper's entry semi-automatic, very similar to the Vepa from Skia, right? And yet now you're telling me I have to get Peacekeeper to level 3, pay out almost $5 million to get him to level 3, to get him to like me, to sell me an M14 that's going to cost me how fucking much? When you're not understanding the idea of starter weapon, are you? You know? Hey, Robert, this is fun and all, but I have to run, so I'm sorry. Hey, dude, it's right. I'm going to end the podcast here. So, anyway, Fearless, thank you for hanging out, man. This has been Behind the Lines. I, I am Deceptive. That's Fearless. We guys are awesome. And I'll see you all on Twitch. Till then, guys. Thank you for inviting me. No worries, bro. Ciao. Ciao.